Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The attempt to the center to establish the National Counterterrorism Center has once again met with strong resistance from all the non-Congress states, with even some Congress chief ministers expressing caution. The debate on this key anti-terrorism instrument, which most feel is necessary, however, has been stuck for last over two years as the center has been unable to convince the states about the concerns expressed by them. The fear that this agency will come in the way of federal structure and impinge on the state's powers has been expressed by many chief ministers. However, the fact is that as terrorism is not just related to one state, the need is for a coordinated effort across the country and even internationally to combat the danger effectively. However, the proposal, apart from the fact that it has raised real concerns, also has taken a political turn with opposition parties worried about it being used against them. What will happen now that the center is once again faced with a stiff resistance? Will the proposal to set up the NCTC now go into the cold storage? What will be the impact on the efforts to combat terrorism? Or how does the center go about convincing the states to agree to the setting up of this key agency? And what more amendments need to be carried out to make it a reality? We will discuss all this today with Shantaram Nayak, Congress MP and spokesman, D.C. Patak, former Director, Intelligence Bureau, Rana Banerjee, former Special Secretary, Cabinet Secretariat, Captain Abhimanyu, spokesman BJP, and Saikat Datta, senior political editor at the DNA newspaper. Welcome to all of you. I'll, let me go to Mr. Shantaram Nayak first. Uh, okay, there's some problem there. He's, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let me come to Mr. Patak. Mr. Patak, uh, the Home Minister, uh, sorry, the, the former Home Minister, who is now the Finance Minister, yesterday, you know, made this, said this, the country will have to pay a price if NCTC is not established. Was this an expression of frustration? Was this a real, uh, was this real? Is, what he says, is it a real thing? Real See, concern? Uh, before we come to that, I, th I, I think it should be understood that, uh, uh, that the functional and the structural framework of the Indian Federation is defined with a great amount of clarity by our constitution. Uh, we are referring to that because of this context about a certain uh, move to strengthen national security, the NCTC issue. I, I think at this stage, let me say that there's no confusion that law and order and policing is a state subject, but national security is a matter where the center and the state have equal stakes. Mr. 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 Patak, sorry, uh, I think uh, we have got Shantaram Nayak uh, now. Mr. Mr. Nayak, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Mr. Yes, Nayak, yes. Mr. Nayak, your uh, finance minister, who was the former home minister yesterday after the meeting, expressed some kind of you know he, his his statement that if the, if NCTC is not established, the country will have to pay a price. This is a very serious statement. You think he was? What was he trying to? Uh, what was he? What was he trying to imply when he says something like this? So I can I can only imagine. You see, whether it is a state subject or what, each time some terrorist act happens, we have seen that nobody blames state government, whichever party it belong to. Yes. Everybody points out fingers towards central government. That's right. When this is the reality, right. then center has to act, has to prepare a body, constitute a body which can take responsibility of law and order in in certain cases. Right. So you think he was it was an expression of frustration about the way in which this whole uh, attempt has, is being uh, is being curbed or is being stymied. I won't call it frustration. He was picking something which is a reality. Otherwise, oh. why should uh, people in at large should blame central government whenever things happen? Okay, let me get uh, the BJP person, uh, Captain Abhin Abhimanyu. This is what Mr. Shantaram Nayak says. You know, there's, there's a lot of truth in what he says. Whenever there is a terrorist attack in any part of the country, whichever state government is ruling, in, of whichever party, the people and the media and everybody blames the center and not the states. So when center is trying to set up something to combat this problem of terrorism, why do the states come in the way? And you think the, the, now that the center has 
two, two major issues which were being uh, pointed out by the state governments about the NCTC, the proposed NCTC, they have, they have amended it. They say that, you know, IB will not be part of it and they say that whatever action will be taken will be taken in consultation with the centre. Don't you think now that the states should agree to this? First of all, I must uh, say that the national security is a joint and combined responsibility of the centre and states. We do not absolve the states of the responsibility in toto. But yes, as far as any intelligence inputs are concerned, if they are lacking, so the central government has to take the responsibility for those things. But if there is something which lacks on the part of the states with respect to the implementation of those inputs, or th there is something lacking uh, on, on part of the ground forces that are executing on the basis of these inputs, so states also have to take responsibility. Bharati Janata Party as such is not opposed to the concept of having an organization which deals with these issues of terrorism in general. But yes, there are certain issues which we have raised. And we also, uh, with respect to the federalism, with respect to the granting of search and seizure powers, the policing powers to the intelligence agencies. Also, we believe that the multiplicity of the agencies and over centralization of the agencies at the national level, it has not helped anywhere in the world and it is not going to help. More than the content of the uh, provisions of NCT as such, it is also important that the intent also must be clear. We have noted in the past particularly that all the national in investigative agencies and various constitutional bodies have been used for the political purposes. And we've that also is, noted that that and, that Mr. Captain Abhimanyu, I, I so think that goes that goes without saying, and that is across all political parties. Whichever political party has been ruling in the centre, the same kind of allegation has been made against that government. No, I'm sorry, party. you'll have it to agree not to just, one thing. It is not just, it is the, it is not just a problem with the present government. It is government. more of a recent phenomenon, and it is increasing day by day. You have noted the use of CBI, which has been used to. Uh, no, well, let us let us keep CBI as it. Mm -hmm. No, I no, I want I want a clarity uh, clarity on what you are trying to say. You are trying to say that you have, you are, your party is not against the setting up of the NCTC and then you talk about multiplicity of agencies. So, you, you, you know, isn't there some kind of a contradiction in what you are trying to say? No, I I'll, I'll like to tell you that. We, uh, uh, the central government established NatGrid few years ago with a lot of fanfare and it was announced that they will be given a huge budget to establish the data on the international elements and continuous surveillance will be done, analysis will, will be done, their movements will be tracked. What is the status of NatGrid today? Which uh, Mr. Chidambaram, uh, when he was the Home Minister, he had promised to the people and in the Parliament that NatGrid will be established. So having multiple agencies is not the answer. It is the, Im the intention is more important. Whether you are really uh, interested in coming down heavily against the terrorism, so you, you or doubt you, that it's it, just a knee-jerk reaction. So you doubt it, you doubt the intention and you think there's a knee-jerk reaction. Not that I doubt. It's their past performance, the past track record, it establishes the doubt. Mr. Mr. Sitaram, um, sorry, sorry, Mr. Shantaram Nayak, would you like yeah. to respond quickly to this? Yeah, I would like to respond. You see, it is a style of BJP to say that we are not opposed to this under, uh, in principle. This is, a, this is a sentence. And then go on opposing every aspect of it. They are saying this in case of land acquisition bill. They are saying this in case of food security bill. They are saying, oh, we are not opposed. And then, but some amendment should be allowed. And thereby, they nullify this thing. I am giving this only example to show what is the stand of BJP in various other methods. Now, let us take the example of Chhattisgarh. We know how the things have happened. Okay. Prima Fassi. Yeah, Mr. Nayak, we'll, we'll come to, we'll, let's not get, get into Chhattisgarh. <coughs> the whole debate will move into a different direction. I'll, uh, play, uh, I'll let me go to Saikat Datta. Saikat. You heard both the party spokesmen talking about what has happened. You think that this, is, this whole issue has become politicized now? Or do you think that the real concerns, that the concerns being expressed by some of the chief ministers are real concerns and which needs to be addressed? Well, uh, in a democracy like ours, what the chief ministers have to say is, uh, of course, extremely important. But we also have to really look at the efficacy of another body like the NCTC. In my personal opinion, the NCTC will absolutely be of no use to our counter-terrorism structure. Okay. Because if we look at our current counter-terrorism structure, we have about 19 agencies which are looking at counter-terrorism in one way or the other. Also, if you look at what Minister of State RPN Singh had told the Parliament, 
he is already running short of 8000 people in the intelligence bureau which is the main body to do counter terrorism in this country right if you are already short of 8000 people where will the additional people for nctc come from and will those people be able to counter terrorism effectively in a country like india which is so vast and so complex instead no, why not look at the state police forces and strengthen them and have better linkages with the central agencies psychat do you think that if the if the if the issue of shortage of staff in the ib is taken care of nctc can still be a reality no i don't think so for various reasons one nctc is an idea which has been borrowed from the united states right. without looking at the background of how these bodies are created what kind of accountability they have to their parliament what kind of oversight mechanisms what kind of performance audits they do you can't create an nctc in isolation first of all has any intelligence chief ever lost his job because there there has been an intelligence failure until and unless you fix that kind of responsibility in our system any amount of bodies whether it is nctc or fctc or whatever name you give it will never succeed okay mr patak this is an interesting thing what he says has an has any two two things one he Saikat says that there is no need for this body, multiplicity of bodies, which is what Captain Abhimanyu also is saying, uh, while he says that, you know, we don't have any opposition to NCTC. But the question, is there a need for NCTC? You know, I, I have heard this, this debate. I think in the language of the security literate, I like to make three points. Right. One, it is widely accepted that national security challenges are required jointness of center and the states. That's right. That's right. Second, the intention. You mean, when you say jointness, you mean coordination. Yeah, the, the desired form of jointness in, in both information sharing and action. Okay. Now the NCTC, the objective was was good because ultimately the objective was to reduce the gap between information and action. Action. Right. Absolutely. And I think this was very professionally sound this thing. But what went wrong was. the handling of the action part and the impression was created the action could be taken by central agency at the back of the state police this tended to undo all that ib has built over years with the state special branches and you know director ib presides over a, an annual conference right. three day annual conference of the dgps right uh, and no third parties are involved i mean it is between him and the dgps so the political executive so doesn't action, even come in the so so the action part Uh, was not correctly uh, projected now the correction has been made right. that it will be in conjunction with the state or, police uh, i mean so if you have a good system of uh, collaboration already built over the years uh, it is contra this thing that you try to claim that you have a right to take action at the back of the state okay police. now that has and, been and, done with uh, and what does policing mean hmm. uh, arrest seizure and uh, b- 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 and search search these are the thing which is part of the basic policing at the ground level and i i see no reason why nctc uh, should have become acceptable if we re- reduce uh, remove this uh, not this concept you mean not acceptable why it should not have been why it should be accept- not no, acceptable I, i think the idea the, the idea is is not rejected let me say this right the the, the debate arose because the impression i said i mean the, the point is that action there is no reason why in an even in an emergency if you have a system of coordination you can't invoke the local police or state police or their nodal points into action so that correction has come but has come too late after the political the, the, debate the, the, took place and, and the last point yes. third point was that you know you cannot keep on dividing the national security turf IB is the mother organization for all counter intelligence work they do counter espionage counter sabotage counter surveillance dealing with terrorism counter terrorism is a segment of the entire so this body why should it be sort of it has to have organic links with the with the mother organization and on this point professionally i think Uh, dealing thing dealing thing in ncdc is injurious injurious is injurious to the health of national security okay mr banerjee um, you've been listening to all this do you think that the uh, uh, the after these two th- major amendments which the s- s- states had sought have been accepted by the center th- now there is no reason why they should be because but saikat says that you know multiplicity of agencies and he doesn't he doesn't see how nctc will be effective at all 
You see, perceptionally, the uh, impression remains that uh, the operational control for certain actions would remain with an agency which is constitutionally not authorized. The right. objections that have now come from the government in Maharashtra and the government in Karnataka uh, bring out th these reservations. Right. So you have and to look both at of them are Congress governments. Yes. Okay. Uh, so politically, it's become a very controversial issue, and then you have to look at the. Uh, concept of federalism which Mr. Patak began with right in the beginning. You know, we were a constitution which was a federation with a strong unitary bias. Right. But politically the way it has developed, uh, a lot of regional parties have now come to power. Right. And for all of them, uh, the state law and order machinery, the police is a state subject which nobody would like to give up on. Absolutely. So now we should, I think, focus instead of, you know, new agency, new setup, overlap, all these aspects come up, what Saikath has said. So we should focus and concentrate on creation of capacities or development Create of capacities in the police. In the state police? In the state police mainly. So Modernization. Are you, so are you trying to are you trying to agree with uh, absolutely uh, yes. with Saikath saying that NCTC is not necessary at all? No. If it was to come about, it would be a good thing for coalition and for specified works. But it cannot be. In the, in the absence of political consensus on this subject, uh, it would be little self-defeating to have another agency, high bit of the IB, little bit high bit of the RAW, the, con, you know, the counter-terrorism aspects. And you, you will defang these organizations, which are at least effective in some regards. So those considerations will come up. Instead, if we focus on the gaps, the gaps of policing numbers, the gaps of you know modernization, the quick flow of information, the data uh, connectivity, the computerization, which is lacking in the state. So we, but we have Mr. to try but, to bring up uniformity former, of capacity. But the former Home Minister and now the Finance Minister says the country will have to pay a price if you don't if, if this is not. Oh, so he has a very he has a valid point in the sense that what Mr. Nayak also said that responsibility is all the blame game. Uh, every time such an incident happens, uh, the center has to take the major rap. So therefore, this problem will be there. Even if an agency is created, if it doesn't have pro you know proper teeth, uh, it could still uh, be blamed, or it could still fall uh, you know in some respects. So there is oh, yeah, no he, guarantee he, that he, that blame will not happen later on. Mr. Chidambaram has said another thing in response to some of the chief ministers' clear opposition chief ministers' uh, remarks that we already have an effective law. There is no problem with a law because UAPA is an effective law. What we need is an effective instrument to implement the law. We will discuss this and see uh, you know, where we will head towards, what will happen and if, if NCTC can become a reality at all. Please keep watching. We will go into a very short break now. We will come back very soon. Please keep watching. Welcome back. We are discussing the stiff resistance which has been put up by many non-Congress governments and even a couple of Congress governments to the, to the proposal to form NCTC, that's the National Counterterrorism Center, and asking the question, how do we go about this task, whether an NCTC will become a reality at all. Uh, le let me come to Mr. Shantaram Naik. Mr. Shantaram Naik, do yeah. you think that there was initially, as some of the panelists here are pointing out, when and this has been discussed in the last in the last one and a half years, we ourselves on this channel have been, have discussed this issue several times. Was there a mistake on the part of the government at the centre, your government, when it started, when it, when it mooted this proposal, it went about in a manner which many of the state governments and especially the non-Congress governments felt, you know, was be, it was being imposed on them. You think that there could have been a better way of convincing them, better way of going around consultation. The consultation process could have been better. One, second, second question I want you to answer also is, instead of making this an executive decision, do you think taking the, taking the legislative route would have been a better option? See, for, first of all, there is a scheme in the constitution. Otherwise, you have got union list, concurrent list and state list. Right. In which powers are divided. Right. And everybody said law and order is a state list. Now, under several uh, items which are mentioned in these three lists, schemes are made and crores of rupees are distributed and given to state government. Right. Why no state government refusing this amount even when those subjects fall within the realm of the state government? They welcome that amount, they appreciate and they thank the central government. Sever similarly, there are many legislations on the subject which fall in the realm of the state government. These legislations 
are implemented by the state government. Now, when this is the case, why only with respect to some powers there should be objection? And there is a style of certain, uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, non-Congress government to oppose tooth and nail whenever central government tries to just uh, say something on a subject of state list. They should look in the national interest, whether this is required in the national interest or not. If they are patriotic, fine. No, do you, wait, not, wait, Mr. I mean, Mr. Nayak, do you agree? Do you agree with the criticism that, or uh, the criticism that you know the, the consultation process was was not was not in the way it should have been? If they want legislation, they don't. You know the fate of various legislation. They don't allow any legislation to be passed. To say that this should have been done through legislation, I would also welcome as a lawyer that it should be done through legislation. But they take you to parliament, make you introduce a bill, and then they do what they want. They don't allow you pass. <laughs> okay. So ten, ten important bills have not been passed only because of opposition. Okay. Let me let me let me get uh, Captain Abhi, Abhimanyu on this. Captain Abhimanyu, the, the charge is that for, first, do you would you have would you would your party have been uh, better? Uh, looked at this in a better manner if, if this was brought through a legislative process even now you think this bill should be this proposal should be brought through a legislative process I don't think we should be discussing this issue on the political party lines it is more of an issue between the central and the has, states and okay. Mr. Nayak must appreciate that even some of the congress governments have opposed some of the provisions of this NCTC so uh, they I oppose would, some provisions only. They are not political con oppose the concept. So uh, we have not opposed the concept as such. We have also said that, that exactly we are opposed to point. certain provisions, certain provisions with respect to the federal structure of this country, which is a basic uh, feature of the constitution. Can we compromise with that, Captain Abhimanyu? That is one. No, no, Captain Abhimanyu. One second, one second, Captain Abhimanyu. You said that you don't you don't oppose the concept itself. Now the ma two major. Uh, opposition, two major things to which uh, it was uh, there was a lot of opposition was has been removed, has been amended. Now, what are what is it specifically that you people still have a problem when you talk of a fed, you know, coming in the way of the federal structure? Still, you, still, give me give me two two specific points which still remains in this proposal, which you think is going to come in the way of the federal structure and cre create harm to the state's uh, interests. So I would say central government is not yet able to take the uh, states into the confidence with respect to the in, oh, intent itself. As we said that they are more interested in controlling, rather we expect them to be doing the coordination job. And I would also go ahead and say that leave the responsibility of creating a robust intelligence network at the central level with respect to the cross-border uh, terrorism or cross-border infiltration or cross-border um, uh, activities. And as far as the implementation of the anti-terror operations are concerned, it must be coordinated with the states and left to the states to execute and create capacity building so, so, exercises which uh, means with the executing agencies. Which, which, so which, that's a better approach. Why Captain do you want to Abhi reserve Abhi the from, power of the states no, no, and Abhi exercise Abhi control over it? Okay, okay, fine. But Captain Abhimanyu, from what you're saying, it is obvious the implication is that the NCTC is not necessary. Though you say that you know, in, 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 in principle you accept it, whatever you have said just now goes completely against you know, the formation of an yes, NCTC yes, itself. Yes, it may not be necessary. If it you may not really be, okay. implement, okay. if you really, as so I you said, you, you create a robust in intelligence network so at you the admit, national level, so you and admit you also that NCTC, create capacity building uh, at the state levels. So it NCTC may not be necessary. Is, so but as, as, again, as far as your party is concerned, position is, so as far as your party is concerned, NCTC is not necessary. Is that the, is that the stand which we, which we can take as far as the BJP is concerned? No, I said it may not that? be necessary if you are able to implement the entire anti-terror okay. uh, exercise in a genuine and sincere uh, no, I think I think now you are going round and round. Anyway, let me get uh, Saikat in on this. Saikat? No, let, yes. let, let, can you, if you, if you can keep your, uh, you know, your... Uh, uh, saying that NCTC is not necessary. Let us assume, let, please assume for a moment that NCTC is necessary. What other amendments do you think is necessary for this to become acceptable in general to every, uh, you know, all political parties and all states? Well, uh, 
let us go back to December 23rd, 2009 when Mr. Chidambaram first unveiled the concept of NCTC. Yes. And if you go through go through the lecture that he gave to the Intelligence Bureau at the Century Endowment lecture, yes. You will see a large structure which is created which has an intelligence gathering, which has an operational wing and it is also has an investigation wing. Right. Basically a whole lot of bodies were supposed to come together. Right. Now that if it could have been created may have been a bit effective i have my doubts about that but when the government themselves have not been able to put together that structure because of internal dissension and not external for example the research and analysis wing is not very happy with what was suggested at that time because in the existing structure every time they give an input they never get a feedback from the multi agency center so there are issues which have to be dealt with in the existing structure and as mr banerji has said they have to be capacity building has to be done so it's not just a question of amendment to something to ensure that it is acceptable because that is the realm of politics and politics will never be able to resolve something that needs to be dealt with functionally okay mr patak mr I'll patak take, i'll take on with the last point was yes. i think it would have been much better if the nctc would have emerged out of consultations at the dgp's conference rather than political consultations political, okay. that you want okay. now nctc does what there are three segments it fulfills the confusion is about the third segment not about the first two now we needed to identify one a, second this is what what cycle said no one one second cycle said De December two thousand nine, Chidambaram had this yeah, yeah, grand vision of a we all NCTC. Heard, I mean, but now, what is yeah. there is a very diluted version of what he, you know, no, no. initially thought but, of, right? But you know, an experiment, however good, if it passes through an acrimonious debate, it does not become immediately acceptable. It's not a touch and go kind of a thing. So, first thing was that, it, and it was supposed to be an enlarged version of multi-agency yes. center for which reason. there is no, no no ground for it to Very quickly, declare its separation yeah. yeah the the first two segments are intelligence functions you receive information you have a round table everybody's information comes but information is is vague so you work out uh, and and reach the specificity of individual place and time frame of threat and then the third is action which is the simplest part there is no reason why if you have reached that point why can't uh, you you can't call upon the state uh, police or whoever there so is thing is to 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 catch the man okay Step last words to mr banerji from whatever we have seen so far and yesterday whatever has happened you think the nctc will become a reality in the near future or you, you think it's going to go into the cold storage no oh, they may notify it even then even now what we hear but it will not be very effective in this format okay on that note i think we need to end we completely run out of time we will wait and watch what happens the the fact of the matter is this country needs a very effective instrument to combat terrorism which is becoming increasingly more and more sophisticated we will wait and watch what happens thanks to all my guests mr shantaram nayak captain abhimanyu saikat datta mr rana banerji and mr dc patak please keep watching we'll come back with another issue big picture same time tomorrow